Hi, good morning. Uh, my name is Dr. Raja Adnan Ahmed, and I am a consultant psychiatrist working in the uh, UK. And with me this morning is uh, Dr. Andrew. Um, Dr. Andrew uh, will talk us through about how to get uh, training in dermatology. And dermatology is one of the specialty I get a lot of questions about, and a lot of people are interested in that. So I thought it would be interesting to hear experience of an IMG who's actually made into the ST training in dermatology. So just a little bit of uh, uh, introduction. Dr. Andrew is originally from Nigeria and came to UK in 2018. And then he secured a core medical training, which was uh, obviously followed by an MRCP exam. And now he has uh, able to secure his uh, uh, training in um, dermatology. So uh, Dr. Andrew, thank you very much for joining me and giving us the time. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Raj Adnan uh, for having me. And thank you for um, for what you are doing with the videos as well. It's really helpful, I'm sure. Um, so if we start uh, asking, if I start the question by asking you uh, about your journey in UK, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that? So I um, passed the PLAB exam um, ending 2017. And I started my first job at King's College uh, Hospital as a junior clinical fellow in emergency medicine. I did that for four months and then I uh, went to Wales. That was in August 2018 to start core medical training. And during the core medical training, I passed the MRCP part one, part two, and the PACES. Uh, so I finished core medical training in August uh, this year. And um, I secured a clinical research fellow job in um, dermatology in Portsmouth which I'm currently doing. And then I applied for the dermatology training in round one uh, in March, same year. I was not successful in getting a full job, but I got a locum job uh, in Scotland, which I did not accept. Um, reason being that it was six months. Mm. Um, I then uh, reapplied in round two and I got a full training number, which I will start in uh, February, 2021. So. That's I'm great. Really excited uh, about it. Yes. Congratulations. Um, so the first questions I think a lot of IMG will be interested in that. What are the pathways to become a dermatologist? You know, if you are looking in that, what they what should be they be doing? So um, there are essentially three pathways to become a consultant dermatologist in the UK. Uh, you could go through uh, a core training pathway, and then go into the ST training in dermatology and then come out with a certificate of completion of training, or you could um, come to what we call the um, CSAP combined pathway, where you get your core competencies signed off, and then you get your MRCP, and then you just apply into the ST training, and you do your 48 months, and you come out with a CSAP CP, which is equivalent to a CCT, or if you are already a consultant in your home country, and you come to the UK uh, with whichever pathway you follow to get your GMC registration. You can provide supporting documents uh, to the CESAR committee of the GMC and you will get a CESAR certification to work as a consultant. So there are three pathways and each of them has um, its own peculiarities. And it's important to point out that CMT is now replaced by the IMT training, uh, which is different, uh, slightly different. So are, do, are you expected to do three years of uh, IMD or you can apply it in dermatology after the two years? So you're expected to only do two years of IMT. And yeah. then uh, if you have your MRCP complete, yeah. you can always apply uh, to ST3 training in dermatology and you move out of CMT and join ST3 dermatology. Mm. However, if you do complete uh, IMT3 and you want to still do dermatology, you will still start at ST3 because the ST3 in dermatology. So the extra year of IMT doesn't give you any advantage or shorten your ST training in dermatology. Mm. Um, and one of the other questions which a lot of people ask about dermatology, you know, they uh, obviously they see that you go into dermatology training after doing the CMT, but what about the work-life balance? Because a medical registrar job, uh, which is in other specialties of uh, medicine could be very, very busy. Uh, so is it different, your on-call system and your work-life balance, is it different in dermatology? Um, our our on-call system is much better. Uh, we, we don't do um, 
we do about 11 hours on calls and our on calls does not involve doing nights. The only thing is um, our on calls, you have to juggle them with your clinic commitment. So you could still be doing a clinic nine till 5 p.m. and you'd be concurrently doing the dermatology on call. Uh, the only the advantage is dermatology is not a very busy on call. So if you get eight referrals, that's very busy for dermatology. And um, you may not need to see all of the referrals. You can easily review images, review tests, give advice, and then review the patient at some point. Uh, and most times we don't have in we don't have inpatient beds, so we don't keep our own inpatient. So uh, our dermatology patients are on the medics and then we review and give advice. Um, we also run a few emergency clinics. So you might be running the emergency clinic and you might have four or five uh, patients with urgent um, skin needs that need to be reviewed. Mm -hmm. So it's much better. We do weekend on calls, but as I've said, it does not include nights. So it's usually at 9 a.m. to 5 or 9 to 7 p.m., depending on the hospital. Mm -hmm. Um, and we will talk about the, your interview experience of how you secured the ST um, training in dermatology. But before that, if somebody uh, is in their medical training right now, or even if they're in the home countries and they're thinking about dermatology, what sort of things they should be doing or having on their portfolio for them to give uh, advantage on the ST training uh, interview or recruitment uh, time? All right. So I'll uh, answer this in two ways, because um, there might be people that are already in the UK and there will be people that are in their home countries. So if I'll start with people in their home country. So if you're already in your home country, um, you could start by trying to pass the MRCP, because if you were to come here, it may shorten the time you spend in the general medicine on call rota or general medical training before you go into the ST training. So try to sort out MRCP. If you see any interesting cases, try and present them at conferences. If you have any rare cases you've seen, try and do a case report, um, try and do audits. I know we've covered a few on this group about audits and quality improvement project. So try and do some audits, some quality improvement projects in dermatology and go to a dermatology conference. These are all the things you can do from your home country that are really, really important. And if there are any dermatology courses uh, like trainings, uh, let's say a skin surgery course, minor operation course for dermatologists, attend, attend them as well. Uh, try and get the certificates because they really, really good, look good on your portfolio. And that's what the interviewers are after. They want to see how committed you are to dermatology. So attending conferences, uh, publishing case reports, you know, um, you could also publish literature reviews, anything in dermatology, a publication in dermatology. It doesn't have to be on a PubMed cited journal. It just has to be something dermatology specific. Um, so publications, conferences, and courses in dermatology is what you should be focusing on. If you're already in the UK, um, it depends on whether you are doing IMT or you are in a medical job. If you're in a regular medical job, I, I would say try and sign off your alternative uh, certificate of core competencies or alternative certificate of IMT uh, competence and try and get MRCP done. I think the greatest limiting step for people in training is the exams, because if you are, what happened to me, I would use myself as an example, is I had the exams facing me and I had my portfolio, which was really difficult to juggle. So I would say, try and get the exams done as soon as possible if you're in a non-training job, get your alternative certificate of uh, core competence sorted, and then try and attend the British Association of Dermatology Conference. That looks very good on your um, portfolio. It shows commitment to dermatology. Try and attend dermatology courses. Uh, there are two courses I would really advise because they will help you as a registrar in dermatology and they'll also look good on your portfolio. One is the dermoscopy course. So the dermoscopy course is a course that teaches you how to use the dermatoscope. It's an important tool we use in dermatology is like a magnifying glass. 
So it helps you look at lesions, skin cancers. So try and attend that. It's um, run by the British Association of Dermatology. Uh, so if you go to the events, uh, if you go to the BAD website under the events section, you would be able to find links to um, dermoscopy courses. You would also find links to other important courses. So they might be organizing a medical dermatology course that is important. So if you attend these courses, you get the certificates, they really look good on your CV. Um, there is another course called the minor surgery course. It's very important as a registrar to be able to do minor skin surgeries because dermatologists remove skin cancers. So doing that course would show commitment to dermatology. And when you start your registrar training, you will not struggle with skin surgery because you would be expected to be competent in a matter of weeks, basically. That's good. Uh, um, and you also mentioned that uh, some experience to teach as well is important. Um... Yes. Yeah, so um, I, I did some teaching as a core medical trainee and it helped me uh, gain more points uh, for the application. Dermatology is very competitive, so you need a good pre-application score. But I wouldn't say um, a lot of people tend to spend a lot of money trying to get their pre-application scores high. But I think I did a few things. One was uh, with the help of my consultant at the time, I organized a teaching course for uh, juniors uh, rotating in um, stroke medicine. And I did that for three months and I got a certificate and that gave me seven points and added it to my pre-application score. So these are things you could do. Do your quality improvement project, mm. present it. That gives you more points. Mm. If your consultant or someone in your department has publications they are working on, even if they are not in dermatology, but uh, they are going to maybe be published in a PubMed cited journal, you're sure you'll get something like six points from there. So try and, you know, apply yourself and see if these opportunities come up and then participate. So trying, trying to get a good pre-application score helps. I would say try to aim for at least a 40 in your okay. pre-application score. So um, that, that is really good. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing is still the interviews because mm -hmm. that carries 80 mm -hmm. marks. Mm -hmm. So your pre-application score will be multiplied by, I think, 0 0.25, and it comes down to about 20%, while the whole interview mm -hmm. is 80%. So basically, getting a training number depends mm -hmm. on that interview. Okay. So we will talk about the interview experience now, that how, do, how you felt about that. But uh, it's important to point out that this was for the recruitment of February 2021 and every year you know they might change something or process uh, might change so it's always people if you're listening this to this in the future you know they always look out for the uh, most current information from the recruitment website but as far as your interview went how how was the experience and how many stations you have to face and how was it like so the dermatology is uh the, the interview was um uh, quite straightforward you have um three stations it's very competitive i think the competition ratio ranges between three and four every yeah. year, uh, depending on the round. Mm -hmm. And in round one, I think there are about 40 or 45 slots. And in round two, you get something between uh, zero to 20 slots. So every year it varies. Um, there are three stations. Uh, so station one is the uh, portfolio station where you will give them your portfolio, which is in a... Um, in a folder and they will take it into the room for the interviewers to go through it. Uh, and then when you come into the room, uh, they will ask you to talk about yourself, tell, go, run us through your portfolio. Uh, and after that, the questions that will follow are usually, why do you think you deserve a post as a dermatology registrar? So you have to sell yourself. Mm. Uh, you have to tell them those things you've done in dermatology, like the courses, the conferences, uh, if you've done any publications, any case reports, you have to tell them, uh, sell yourself at that interview. And you have to tell them what you're bringing to the table as a dermatology registrar. So that is where all of those things you would have done in dermatology will come into play. Okay. Uh, and that was the portfolio station. And what are the other two stations? 
So uh, there is the second station, which is the abstract station. This is the trickiest part of the interview. Uh, you will be giving an abstract from a recent uh, dermatology publication. Usually they go through the uh, British Association of Dermatology Journal. Mm -hmm. So the CED or the um, British Journal of Dermatology, that's where they get the abstracts. Um, so you'll be giving about five minutes to go through the abstract outside the station. And then when you go into the station, you would be asked to summarize the abstract in your own words. Uh, and then uh, you would also be asked to explain whether uh, the research finding in that abstract will change your clinical practice. So it will usually be a randomized control trial and they would want to hear how you go about explaining it, the strengths and the weaknesses of the paper and the, um, and the research basically. Uh, on its own. And after that, they would ask you um, a, a, a clinical governance question. So going through the, um, uh, the medical interview book would really help for the governance question as well. So um, that lasts about half an hour, same as the first station. And then you go to the next station as well. Um, the next station uh, is the clinical scenario station and the uh, ethics. So you have two questions in that station. So you would be giving a picture of a skin condition or you'd be told a history of someone's presentation. And they're usually general um, dermatology conditions you see either when you're on call or when you're in clinic. So it would be something like a vasculitic rash or a drug rash uh, or TEN or it could even be something as simple as scabies. So uh, you would be given something like that and you'd be asked to uh, explain how you'd go about managing the condition. So you, you will be expected to talk about how you take your history, how you would examine, how you would investigate and how you would manage. Um, the most important thing is to remember to always say, you will discuss the management plan with your consultant and um, just go through the Oxford Handbook of uh, Medical Dermatology for common uh, skin problems as well. Mm -hmm. um, after you've answered the clinical scenario, you'll be um, asked an ethical question. So it will be an ethical question related to dermatology, such as a mother brings her child with eczema and she has steroid phobia. So things like that, and then you'd be expected to talk through how you'd go about it. So it's not very different from the ethical scenario you would be faced with in um, core medical training or IMT interview. It's just about polishing uh, your answers. Uh, and I attended a very interesting um, interview course, which is run by a British dermatologist based in London. Uh, it's called the Derm Owl. So if you Google that, um, they, they run very fantastic courses. Um, if you Google that and you try and attend a few weeks to your interview, it's really, really good. Um, so I attended that in my first interview. And then I attended again in my second interview. And I think it was very, very helpful. So they do a one-to-one -one session for the uh, portfolio station, which basically tells you how to sell yourself. And then they do a one-to-one -one session for the abstract station, which teaches you how to go about um, analyzing those uh, abstracts you'll be giving in station mm -hmm. two. And overall, I think the course was worth it. And I think it is a deal breaker. Mm -hmm. A lot of dermatology trainees and consultants know about the course, but I think no one would really talk about it, but mm -hmm. it's really good, yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, thank you for uh, sharing your experience. Um, so what is the time of training uh, and as, as an ST doctor? And is there an exit exam uh, during the training that you have to do? So uh, dermatology is 48 months. Um, so you spend 48 months in dermatology. There are no medical or calls. Um, you have your ARCPs every year and there is one exit exam. And the exam needs to be taken between ST5 and ST6. So your first year of training is ST3. You're not expected to write past the SCE exam. And ST4, you're also not expected to pass it. But by ST5 and ST6, you're expected to pass the exam. So it's an objective exam. Um, so there's no written part. It's just like the MRCP, but only dermatology. 
Um, and I think it's done online. So it's computer based as well. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't heard um, people having difficulties with the exams. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's quite straightforward from what I've heard. And they're easily accessible materials to mm -hmm. use and pass. Yes. And uh, there's, there were always in, in UK, there are always super specialties as well attached to specialties. So in dermatology, is there any scope of doing something extra or something super special that, that you can become? Yes, of course. Uh, dermatology has uh, various super specialties. Um, uh, after you CCT, there's, there are two options, basically. You can become a general dermatologist mm -hmm. and get a job in any hospital in the NHS or work privately. And you can develop your own specialty interest let's say you're interested in pediatrics dermatology and you can just stay in that specialty. But most people are now doing fellowships in those specialties. So you have Mohs surgery, which is a special type of fellowship for people that uh, remove skin cancers uh, by a special type of surgery. So basically um, you, you, you take out a skin cancer and uh, you do a frozen section mm. while the patient is still beside you, you have a biomedical scientist that will tell you whether your margins uh, are clear, whether you've taken out all the tumor or you need to cut out some more tissues and they will mark where that is. So that's a special kind of surgery and it's uh, especially done for people with skin cancers on their face. So that is most surgery. So it's a one year fellowship. Um, there is also a pediatric dermatology fellowship where people do uh, just pediatric dermatology. So I know that Birmingham is a center that does a pediatric dermatology fellowship. Um, I know that there is a Moore's fellowship, Moore's Skin Cancer Fellowship in uh, Wessex, that's in Portsmouth, and there are some as well in London. Uh, you can do a laser or cosmetic dermatology fellowship. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested in cosmetic dermatology and laser fellowship, and you could do a cutaneous cancer fellowship as well, if that's what you're interested in. Some people go into cutaneous allergies and they do a fellowship there. So people, they deal with atopic dermatitis and they do all the patch testing and um, skin prick testing basically. So these are all fellowships and most of them are approved by the British Association of Dermatology in conjunction with the uh, GMC and the Royal College of Physicians. And you can also do a fellowship abroad. So I know people that have done their most fellowship in the US, which is one year. Some have done it in Canada. It's pretty straightforward to get a fellowship as soon as you see CT. Mm. So um, people have done those fellowships and they've mm. come back to the UK and it's still accept acceptable. And people have done those fellowships in those countries and have stayed back in those countries because the CCT and that fellowship is also acceptable then. Yes. Uh, thank you very much for sharing your experience and also your knowledge. I'm sure a lot of IMGs will be benefiting from this. Um, have you got, this is just the last question, have you got any general advice for the IMGs, you know, junior doctors looking at us, uh, looking at yourself, uh, sitting in the home countries, thinking about UK, um, you know, thinking, dreaming to come and work here, you know, always it, at, at that stage, it might look quite difficult uh, or so many steps or so many exams or so many difficulties. Uh, do you have any advice for them? Um, I... I, I still remember uh, when I was still in Nigeria, I think in 2017, I, I never believed that I would ever get a dermatology training post. I was already resigned to doing GP training. Uh, but until I came and then I thought, you know, it, there is a possibility. And what I would say to anyone, you know, planning his UK dream is, just don't let anyone pull you down. Don't let anyone tell you it's not possible. Um, it is possible. I came here in 2018 and yes, I've gotten a dermatology training number and you can get it. Dermatology is very competitive. The competition ratio is between three and four, but I still got a number. So if I can do it, you can do it. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much for, uh, for your time and uh, uh, the really good messages you have given us. Uh, and uh, I will share your, I'm, I'm, I know you've already shared your experience on the Facebook uh, uh, group and I will share the link with this, uh, with this interview as well. So people who, who want to write, uh, who, wanna, who want to 
um, uh, read your write up, you know, they can also um, uh, refer to that. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much.